he is what he is. It's Stephon Diggs. You know, we, 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 we know he is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, you know, receiver in the game right now. And I trust him implicitly. I love that guy. He works his tail off. It's never, it's never personal for me. It's business for me. Like, the next team, they in front of me, they in my way. Um, where I'm trying to go, what I'm trying to do. Uh, and I'm trying to stack wins. But, you know, the next team is always the next team. But it's never no extra incentive when I, uh, when I play Tennessee. I like Tennessee. Nashville, hot chicken, and all. <laughs> Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Not just the hot chicken in Tennessee that is hot, it is Stephon Diggs and the entire Buffalo Bills offense. Listen, it is noon on Peacock, but it's 5 o'clock somewhere. My name is Matthew Berry. He's Connor Rogers. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour right here on Peacock and wherever you get your podcasts. Man, how about those? How about them Bills? Monday Night Football doubleheader. Yeah, a lot of points if you like the Bills. Good amount of points if you like the Eagles. Where else to start but Buffalo? Yeah, I don't like the doubleheader. I'll just say this right now. Well, simultaneously, I, simultaneously, I, simultaneously, I, don't, I like, don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, I'm a fan. No, it, like, it's no. usually Monday. You just buckle down yeah. and you focus on one game. I'm okay with the doubleheader. Give me back to back games. Not, don't don't make yep. me overlap. Don't make me don't. Make, I'm already distracted enough. The good news is, unless you were focused on just one player and they probably weren't playing in the fourth quarter. This game was out of reach pretty early. It really was. Yeah, the Bills winning 41-7 against the former number one seed in the AFC, the Tennessee Titans. And we'll get to some of their problems in a bit. But let's start with Buffalo. Sure. Josh Allen. Uh, he's very good. He's pretty good. There pretty you go. good. There's Hashtag a reason analysis. he was the number one quarterback drafted in fantasy by a wide margin this year. He has lived up to the hype. But I think just as much as he's good, this connection to Stephon Diggs, friend of the show, is absolutely insane right yeah, now. Yeah, the chief ball officer, yes. uh, Stephon Diggs, friend of the show there. I, look, what else is it to say about Josh Allen? His 140 points with Stephon Diggs through the first two games, right? That's the most all-time by a quarterback-wide receiver duo. He's got the most points per game by any quarterback through uh, th up to week three since 2019. So he is not only on pace for a, a historic season, but he is justifying being the number one overall pick in two quarterback leagues. He's justifying being the number one quarterback. I mean, just there's what analysis you want. Like if you have Josh Allen, <laughs> good you're for psyched. you. You're not trading him. If you have Stephon Diggs, who has the most fantasy points through the first two weeks by any wide receiver in the last 20 years. He is awesome. A 41% target share against the Tennessee Titans back-to-back 100-yard -back games for Stephon Diggs. I, you, you see the footage right here. There we go. There's Josh Allen. I'm scrambling around. Where's 14? There's 14. Easy peasy. What are you going to do? He's just – that is an actual – and now – oh, here goes Josh Allen back again. This probably isn't interesting to people that are listening on the podcast, but all I got to tell you – is this is just amazing footage. If you, this is one of the reasons to watch this on Peacock, because you can just watch Stephon Diggs just absolutely blow past uh, people in the NFL. Um, it's great. I, I do think there's no fantasy takeaway here other than this. If you have either one of these guys, you're thrilled. I do think that it was a somewhat of a unique situation. At home, Monday Night Football, 10 days to prepare, and no Gabriel Davis yes. in this game. We talked about this on fantasy football pregame Sunday morning, I said with Michael Smith, I said, I'm hearing from my sources, 99% chance Gabriel Davis does not play. He suffered that, uh, that injury late in the week. They, they wanted him to go. They took it smart. We'll see what happens with him over the course of the week. But so without him there, 41% target share. And I think what this game did is it really proved that for as great as the Bills are offensively, Connor, Fantasy-wise, it's really three guys. Yep. It's Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and Gabriel Davis. We can talk about Singletary in a second, but, like, if ever there was a game that Isaiah McKenzie should have done something, if ever there was a game that, like, Jake Kumaro, who ran the second most snaps and the second most routes for Buffalo Wild, Wild yeah. Receivers, should – like, somebody else should – they put up 41 at home against the Titans, and no other Bills pass catcher really did anything. I Dawson Knox is a touchdown-dependent tight end. Yep. You want to roll him out there because you, you waited on a tight end. I don't have an issue with that. But I just it just feels like if we're looking for fantasy value beyond those three big guys, consistent fantasy value beyond Allen, Diggs, and Gabe Davis, doesn't seem like it's there. There was a stretch in the middle of this game where they just threw the ball over and over and over again. They didn't even think about running because why should they? They are right. that overpowering Josh Allen to Stephon Diggs. And when Gabe Davis is back, you know he's going to get his. So when you look at this backfield right now, 
You, I'm sure people that drafted Motor Singletary are still holding out hope that he can be productive, sure. maybe as a flex. But how do you even handle this backfield? Are you getting to the point where you almost ignore it because Zach Moss isn't going to be overly effective, James Cook, they're trying to get him involved. Is I, there anything there? I still ha hold out hope for Devin Singletary. Uh, but, you know, and I think, like, he could have gotten – I think if he'd gotten a touchdown, he was on his way to a touchdown, and then there was a penalty, so it gets called back. Like that would have been a touchdown. You know, the the touchdown to Gilliam. Does that if that goes to him? Right, the, it's really, a fluke. It's a fluke. <laughs> you know, maybe the narrative's a little bit different. But again, a home game in which the Bills were up forty-one. The, the Bills won forty-one-seven. This game was never in doubt. They're up big, and Devin Singletary gets six carries, six for nineteen. I'm just, I mean, they were passing at will. But he doesn't really have a lot of passing game usage. He got four targets in this one. I mean, they got out so big early, that like Singletary got pulled, and you saw some James Cook, and they got Moss involved. But Singletary, to me, is more of a flex than a count on a top 20 running back. And in your flex, generally speaking, you're probably going to want, unless it's a deeper league, you're probably going to want a wide receiver. So I, I'm not dropping Devin Singletary. But, again, if he can't get it done, in a home game where they're winning 41-7, when is Devin Single? When are you going to feel good about starting Devin Singletary? And this is the point I'm going to make, and I'm going to make it a couple times this show. It's not about production. It's about knowing when to get that production. Because there'll be games over the course of this year where Isaiah McKenzie or Devin Singletary or James Cooks or Dawson Knox where any of these other uh, complimentary Bills players have good fantasy games. They absolutely will. That offense is too good. He's too good. Josh Allen's too good. He's going to get everyone involved. So there'll be good games. It's just knowing when to start Isaiah McKenzie, knowing when to start, a, you know, when it's going to be a Devin Singletary game. I just don't think there's going to be that. I, I think it's going to be hard to figure out when that is. And I don't know that the upside is worth the inconsistency you're going to get from these guys because that offense is so funneled through those three guys. So for me, I'm holding on to Singletary. I guess Knox and McKenzie, but like picking your spots, picking your spots. And I think it's more depth. And I think that's what I learned last night for the bills is like fantasy wise. It's those three guys on the flip side, the Titans who in the past have had premium talent that you can rely on Derrick Henry. Of course, some of it's no longer there, man, a little scary right now in Tennessee, Derrick Henry, 13 rushes, 25 yards, one touchdown. He has been held to single digit fantasy points in each of his first two games. The fear factor for the Tennessee offense has to be pretty high right now, right, Matthew? I, I mean, it looks awful. T like, I, 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 yeah. No, again, they ran into a buzzsaw that is the Bills. That's one of the best teams in the NFL. That the, the, they're Super Bowl favorites, but they also lost to the Giants. Yeah, they look and bad. They, listen, one. the Giants are two and zero. Maybe the Giants have a better defense than we're giving them credit for. But Derrick Henry looks slow. He has not looked like King Henry. Yep. Let's be clear. And there is nothing in the passing game. You saw them start out the game with a couple of passes to Traylon Burks, and we'll talk about him in a second. But Derrick Henry has not been the guy that we hoped for. Under nine fantasy points in two straight games. He's not getting a ton of work. He got 13 touches and 13 carries in this game. He's not being involved in the passing game. We'd hope that there would be some an increased usage in the passing game, and they're going to have to try to get creative with Derrick Henry because – Teams are basically saying, like, we're not scared of Ryan Tannehill. We're not scared of, uh, you know, without with Burks of, of Woods or any yeah. of these receivers. And so without A.J. Brown there to stretch the offense and the, the offensive line, look, Taylor Lewan went out of this game early, so certainly that that's not ideal. But when game script goes against the Tennessee Titans, when they get blown out the way they did in this game, like, what do you do? That's the problem is that how game script dependent is Derrick Henry. Because again, he doesn't have passing game usage. I, I, boy, oh boy, I'm I'm nervous. I'm nervous on the big dog. Now they'll get. I think they'll get him going. But the thing you have to think about is look at this upcoming schedule now for the Tennessee Titans, right? They um, uh, this week I think they play. They play the Colts. No, they play. Hang on. I'm gonna. I'll give okay. me one second. Let me pull this up because they're they're scheduled the next three weeks here. So the division's weak as a whole. They play the, I'm sorry, they play the Raiders, yes. then the Commanders, then the Colts. Those are the next three. Those are all three games they could lose. They'll probably beat my Commanders because, you know, life's unfair. But, but, but like, Raiders are a, good, a pretty good 0-2 team yep. and desperate. So you got the Raiders coming in. Then you got my Commanders probably going to be 1-2 after they lose to the Eagles this week. And then, I'm sorry, the Colts, they're going to be desperate. And then you got the Commanders in week five. I don't have the schedule memorized here. But the fact of the matter is, is they've got three losable games. They could be 0-5, they could be 1-4 heading into their bye. And so at that point, if they're 1-4, and four, if they're, even if they're 2-3 and three or 0-5, like all of which is within the realm of possibility, do they make the switch to Malik Willis? Which, by the way, Malik Willis does not look ready for prime time. 
I will say that I think if you're in a deep two quarterback league, I don't mind grabbing Malik Willis and stashing him because I do think it, I think the Tannehill era is coming to an end yes. sooner rather than later in Tennessee. But uh, and I think Malik Willis will have fantasy value because of his rushing. Mm-hmm. But just from a pure NFL prospect perspective, Connor, you can speak to this. Sure. He was he was raw coming out of Liberty. Absolutely. Transferred from Auburn to Liberty, and he's a raw he's raw as a passer. All the talents there. But here's the thing I'm wondering, Matthew, at Tennessee, if their season goes in the toilet, like you're saying. They have to find out about Malik Willis because they could be going to the draft with a high pick in a quarterback class. So I, I agree with you that this could be the Malik Willis show because they have to see what he right. could do this year. And then you're like, what am I doing with Derek? So I don't... scale back to Derrick Henry, right? right? Put all, you just laid it all out. Do you sell now while there's anything there? There might be somebody in your league that goes, I, it's Derrick Henry. It's going to work out eventually, knowing how the forecast looks. Or do you hold on because you, you paid a premium in the draft? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on every, every, every league is different. I would certainly dangle him. I would certainly be like, you know, especially if I'm sitting there, if I'm in a fantasy league where I'm 1-1 one one or I'm 0-2, I, I'm nervous about Derrick Henry and his, his role in this offense. He'll have some good games. He's just too good. Yep. He'll have some two touchdown games because that's just sort of who he is. But uh, if I didn't trade him now this week, I might – like, if, does he have a big game against the Raiders this week? Um, and so if he does – you know, um, then that becomes sort of interesting, right? The game is in Tennessee, which is helpful. So West Coast team traveling east for a 1 o'clock game against the Titans. I could see Henry having a nice game against the Raiders. I think you can run on Las Vegas. And so after that, I might be like, hey. Sell high. Sell high. Quote, unquote, yes, sell high. Like, because his value is so low right now. But, yes, should I be panicked about Derrick Henry? Yes, 100%, because he is is seemingly – he looks slow and old and game script dependent, and this is a team that I don't think is going to be leading in a lot of games that they like they were last year. All right, the other game, Eagles taking One down. One last thing on this game, oh, I yes. just want to very quickly, is Traylon Burks. It was nice to see him. He led the Titans Solid in game. targets, tied for the most routes, and I wonder if he is this year's a poor man's. I want to underline poor man's Jamar Chase in this sense. He wasn't the prospect that Jamar Chase was coming out of college, yep. of course, right? I'm not saying he's got that kind of talent. He doesn't have that kind of offense or quarterback with him. But Traylon Burks was a guy that was drafted in the first round, so had some nice draft capital, was a prospect that we liked coming out of college, and then had a poor preseason, and so his ADP dropped during the, the fantasy draft process. And then it was just like, oh, yeah, that's right. This guy's a talented guy. That's what happened with Jamar Chase, where he had some bad drops in the preseason. Everyone dropped him in his ADP, and then he, he had a monster year. I don't think Traylon Burks has a top five fantasy season in him, but I think if you're investing in a Titans wide receiver, Traylon Burks is not 100% rostered in Yahoo, and as we get into waivers later in the show, I do think that's somebody to look at and see, hey, is he out there in the leagues? Because I do think they're going to try to – they need to get him going too. To your point, we're we're close to this being a rebuilding year in Tennessee, and they need to see what they have in Burks. Especially in keeper leagues where you could be stashing him for free at this point. He led the Titans in targets with six. He tied uh, for the most routes ran with 14. So there's obviously a – Yes, There's yes. going to be a focus to feature him a little bit. All right, Eagles against the Vikings. This was uh, not a very close game. Kirk Cousins, primetime Kirk Cousins. We know what happens there. But more importantly. I'm so mad at myself because we gave out our bets, and my bets cashed. You know, I, I, I did the, not. I, well, I, I, this is true. You got, by you half got, a yard. I know, by half a yard. You had the Kenneth Gainwell receiving yards at 11 and a half, you know, and you got you got killed by the hook there. He, he stops at 11. Um, I had the under on Kirk Cousins passing yards. I also had the over on Stefan Diggs receiving yards. I went two for two. But you know what? What we should have done is we both should have said, hey, just by the, the free bingo space is Kirk Cousins to throw an interception. Like, I, why we didn't, like, just mention that? Because it is the free <laughs> bingo space. It. Yes. We ever thought it. Anyway, primetime Kirk. Jalen Hurts, your ride or My die. My fantasy ride or die. The summer ride of Hurts. Ride or mother blank and die. And you know what? In a way, it, it feels like it kind of came back to bite you because here on the Fantasy Football Happy Hour, we have a fantasy football league. And <laughs> yeah, Matthew's nifty team. Face two other than Alexa, Alexa with oh. yeah. Jalen Hurts. Yeah, so I just want you to look at look at that team. Look at Alexa's team, right? So she has my ride or die. She has a tough game from Juju, but she has Juju. She has Aaron Jones, free Aaron Jones. You guys know what? Aaron Jones is on my preseason love list. Andre Swift on my preseason love list. Like Michael Thomas on the preseason love list. So you sit here and look and like look at my loss. I think my guys beat, I think my guys performed. You played yourself. I played myself. And so I just want to point, so Alexa, who's the producer of the show, she's all of our bosses. 
She, I mean, you look at my team right there, right? I mean, by the way, Kyle Pitts just absolutely killed me there. Give Pitts Connor a chance. Lee, Connor left the game early. I have some, I have some injuries there on that team already as well. I mean, Goff had, it's a two quarterback league as you see there. Like, I'm not embarrassed by that team. You know, I mean, Lazard, Shepard, I had to fill in with a couple of guys. Kittle is hurt in that league. Yeah. I have Kittle in that league um, as well. So as a flex, like I had, I had some injured guys. Here's what I want to say though. Here's what, you, you, before you were a talent at Bleacher Report, Connor, you were a producer, right? Yes. And what's the number one job of a producer? Make the talent look good. Always. Right? Support your talent. Support your on-air hosts. And so Alexa had the pick before me. Everyone's like, how'd you not get your ride or die? I remember I never this. got it to because Alexa literally picked in the first round before I ever got a chance to pick, she drafted Jalen Hurts. So the question is, is like, so Alexa chose to put that out on the show. She's like, oh, yeah, put that in there that I beat Barry in the show. It's fine. You won. Congrats, Alexa. Asked and answered. We'll see. It's a long season. I'm not worried about my 0-2 team. What I will say, because it's a 14-team league, I like my team. Um, and I like my bench there. But what I'd say is that what I think what Alexa has done is she's not supported her talent. She's not put her, produ- her, her talent in a position to succeed. It's an inside she's not job. Support- I'm, just, I'm just saying, fine, you did a good job as a fantasy manager, but as a producer, awful. Terrible. And I don't know why she would want to put that out there for America to see. But whatever. Apparently, she's got job security or something like that. It's just an aw- this is, to me, everyone says that and like goes, oh, Barry's 0-2. To me, I say that. That's Alexa saying, like, hey, I'm not doing a good job producing. That's, <laughs> that's how I look at that. That's just me. It's just me. When she made the pick, his reaction in the chat in all caps was, are you kidding me? In yeah, all caps. Right. And I think I used a, a word that started the, the letter F as well. Yeah, Before yeah, that, I, mean, I, I, I know. Used we're, we're keeping it PG uh, like here what, on the happy hour. I, anyway. But my fantasy ride or die showed up because it – it is what it is. I, thank you. You're welcome, America. You are welcome. Everyone that has Jalen Hurts, you are welcome. They laughed at me. They laughed at me when I went on national TV and I said, yeah, did. this is the guy. Quarterback one in fantasy is within the range of outcomes. And Josh Allen's making that tough. But Jalen Hurts is giving him a run for his money. They thought that was crazy. They thought it was insane that I had him as QB4 overall, that I had him ahead of Brady, that I had him ahead of Lamar Jackson. Through two games, I mean, Jalen Hurts is looking pretty damn good. 28.9 points per game right now. Obviously, the three touchdown night. Two of them coming on the ground. 57 rushing yards. Uh, he still would have finished his QB three in week two if he didn't play in the second half. He had 31 fantasy points in the first half. Targeted three different receivers at least six times. I mean, I mean, Matthew, what more do you want to see from Jalen Hurts right now? I, 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 just to stay healthy. Just yes. to stay healthy. And like as a favor, could you please take it easy on my Commanders next week? Because I think they're going to just absolutely destroy Washington. By the way, he's now moved up to the third best odds to win MVP at plus 1,000. That's thanks to our friends at BetMGM, new sports betting partner here in the Happy Hour. That's BetMGM, right. welcome, welcome to the show, to the show BetMGM. We appreciate you guys as well. He was 50 to 1 to win this award in the preseason. He's now at plus 1,000. Anyway, fantasy ride or die. I'm wearing, you know me, I'm a Commanders fan. So for me to wear a jersey means something. I'm just saying, much love to Jalen Hurts. Congratulations. This is not a fluke. The schedule is ter- ridiculously easy for Jalen Hurts. It's a great offensive line and the weapons there. A.J. Brown is ridiculous, of course. Devontae Smith, you know, I mean, like, here's the other thing is he targeted. Three different receivers at least six times. I mean, he's spreading the ball around. He made throws into coverage. Like, you know, just a, a just a, a, you know, put your flag in the ground kind of statement performance from Jalen Hurts last night. My fantasy ride or die. You're welcome. I just want to say to everyone, you are welcome, except Alexa, at which point I say, you know, you know, <laughs> to Alexa. They laughed at this man on television. Uh, let's talk about his weapons. So Devontae Smith bouncing back from the goose egg game. Yeah. Seven catches, 80 yards. Uh, most receptions by an Eagles pass catcher in week two after zero in week one. Most important thing here for me, Barry, is he played 72 of the 73 offensive snaps. He's going to be on the field. Yeah. And if you're on the field in this offense in one of those top three roles, you're probably going to find success pretty consistently. Yeah, I mean, I just, listen, we know about the first run talent. It's still going to be a run first offense, and we still know that passing offense goes through A.J. Brown. But if you're sifting around the wide receiver four with upside type guys, I think he has more than most given his skill set and that offense. All right, Dallas Goddard, uh, another pretty good game here. Five, I mean, it's pretty steady Eddie for all these guys. Five catches, 82 yards, 30-plus routes ran in each of his first yeah. two games. Has seen at least four targets in the first two games. He, he had he six is. against he's Minnesota. A, he's a, he's a lower-end tight end one who's yep. solid production in weeks in which he scores. You know, y- you love it. I think, I think people are going to look at this game. To me, the most interesting guy after my guy Jalen, Miles Sanders. Mm. Miles Sanders, I think, is a sell high. 
because people are going to sit here and look like this, right? Like he had 20 touches, 17 rushes, three he caught three balls, 86 total yards. You're like, hey, 20 touches. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Miles Sanders, he's the guy. We were talking, oh, maybe this is a committee with Gainwell and Boston Scott. And like, oh, no, no, he's the guy. 20 Run touches. heavy offense. And I'm just like, again, this is sort of what I was talking about with the Bills. If ever there was a game in which, you know, he should have had like a monster game, it's this one, right? I mean, this is a this is a game in which the Philadelphia Eagles won 24 to 7 and they controlled it from moment one. They were in control of this game from the start. He got 20 touches in a home game against a team they were dominating. He winds up with what? A, you know, 11.6 fantasy points yeah. in PPR? So, I mean, like, basically, like, I mean, you think here's Daryl Henderson was running back 20 this week with 10.7. Raheem Mostert running back 20 with 10.9. I mean, like, the, like borderline top 20 in as, un, in, in as ideal a situation as you could have asked. And it was just like, eh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Like, and maybe if he gets into the end zone, it's a different story. He gets 17. But I just, he's got, he's got touchdown competition in Boston Scott, Kenneth Gainwell, and obviously Jalen Hurts. That's the big one. That's the big one. He, is, he has struggled with health throughout his NFL career. So now you've got a guy that, has, ha, that he is, he's always a risk to get injured. He, has, he is competing with three other ball carriers for touchdowns. Like, to me, like, when your best case scenario is this, like, that could, you got 20 touches in a game, you were winning at home by three touchdowns. And the best you could do was 11.6 fantasy points? Like, I, he's fine. But to me, this is the highest value Miles Sanders is ever going to be in, like, you know, a standalone game. They dominated. Hey, he got 20 touches. You know the touchdowns are coming. Like, that's how I'd sell him if I had him in a league. But, I, he, like, I, there's, a more of a, there's much more of a, of a bottom than, I think, a ceiling for Miles Sanders. So, given the usage, uh, I, would actually, I would actually try to move off of him because I don't think – I'm just I'm nervous. I'm nervous about the I'm ner nervous about the health and the touchdowns. Yeah, no, it completely makes sense. He's been injured, you know, every year he's been in the NFL. He misses time. He goes on the injury report. You don't know if he's going to play. And right now, everybody's looking at him and going, "Oh, this is a rock solid RB two that you could set and forget every time in the lineup." So maybe there is sell potential there. Let's talk about the Vikings, who, you know, some fantasy players might be hitting the panic button on. I don't think that's necessarily how we feel here. But prime time Kirk Cousins strikes yet again. Yeah, he was he was bad. I you know I mean, here's the thing. I, this is just, I would love to overreact to this game, but I'm not going to. Sure. I believed in Kirk Cousins in the preseason. I believed in the Vikings offense in the preseason. I'm still there. Like, again, I didn't like Kirk Cousins in this game. Again, prime time. Felt like this was, the Eagles have a really good They're defense. really For good all team. all the talk about Jalen Hurts, and I've been a big, you know, I've been as big a Jalen Hurts fan and promoter the last couple of years as anyone. Um, but as much as I've talked about that offensive line, the schedule, uh, A.J. Brown acquisition, Jalen Hurts at quarterback. The fact of the matter is, is very quietly, Howie Roseman has put together an unbelievable defense in Philadelphia. Credit where credit is due. The Eagles are a legit, legit Super Bowl contender. They are. They're in that conversation now. I believe they are. And that defense is amazing. They're, they, they finally have some linebackers. Slay played out of his mind last night. Cousins in prime time. It is a thing, right? I think he's got, what, what's this? He's like 2-17, and 2-27. and 27. I think he's 10-18. and 18. Not, I mean, it's, he's yeah. not, it's whatever the number is. It's brutal. Yeah. I don't know it off the yep. top of my head. Um, but two, Monday Night Football uh, specifically, 2-10. 2-10. and, 10. Two and 10. Right. Monday I think in football. prime time games, I think it's, it's even worse. 10-18. Yeah. 10-18 um, and, 18. and 18 in prime time. Here's the positives. Only one other prime time game. The Where can you find it? Right. It's the Thanksgiving, <laughs> Thanksgiving night game right here on NBC and Peacock. Um, uh, God bless. Um, so you'll be thankful if you have a different quarterback that week. <laughs> but, um, but I'm still in on this. I, nothing about this game changes how I feel about the Vikings. Just a bad day at the office. This happens. But I'm still in on Kirk Cousins as a low-end QB1 with tremendous upside. I'm still in on Justin Jefferson. I'm still on a Dalvin Cook as a top five uh, fantasy tight end. I think if Irv Smith walks, catches that ball and walks in the end zone, I think the narrative is a little bit different here as well. Irv Smith had a, you know, Irv Smith, by the way. Could Irv have Smith a massive is, day. Could have had a massive day. Irv Smith, I think, continues to be interesting. For whatever reason, they just they weren't looking Adam Thielen's way uh, early. He finally got involved late when the game was sort of out of hand. He's trying to force some stuff there. Better days are ahead for the Minnesota Vikings here as well. Uh, this week, uh, the Vikings are playing home, I believe, and they are against – sorry, why am I uh, – the, they are home against the Detroit Lions at a 1 o'clock game. Shootout. So, shootout. I mean, that – 
I mean, the Lions, have, you know, just gave up whatever. Got, you know, destroyed by Jalen Hurts. They gave up over 300 yards to Carson Wentz and four touchdowns. Like, this is going to be a bounce-back game for uh, the Minnesota Vikings and Kirk Cousins. And if anyone in your league is panicking on any of the Vikings, I would try to acquire low. I'm still in on all of them. Just a bad day at the office. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.